Hi, good morning or afternoon, everybody. We're now live on screen. Um, the session will start in five minutes, so please be patient for a couple of minutes. In five minutes, we're actually starting with the MOOC. Thank you. Good morning. It's a very nice day in Vienna, and I'm lucky to be here to um, have you for this 11th MOOC. The topic of today's MOOC will be Robotics in Tricentis Tosca, or How to Automate Your Everyday's Work. Very nice topic. Today, we have joining us myself, Jonathan Laun, uh, training consultant here at Tricentis. And uh, it's my pleasure to also to welcome the head of training of Tricentis, Frank Miklisch. Hi, good morning, everybody. 
The topics today will be uh, what is robotics, a little bit of uh, theory, what you can imagine when uh, you think about robotics and Tosca in combination, and then we will see some robotics live presented uh, by our wonderful Frank Miklish. Before we start, we'll have a little bit of MOOC etiquette. Uh, we will do this every time, uh, but for because uh, every time new people are joining us, so just everybody is clear. We started on time, and unfortunately, we will also finish on time. We have one hour, so we will close at 11 o'clock um, exactly. We have no break, unfortunately. We have had to mute you. Uh, there are hundreds of you now outside there uh, and we can have you talking at the same time so we had to mute, mute you though you can ask questions every time during the MOOC and we will try to answer them um, and pick also the kind of good questions for the end for our Q and A part please uh, stay on the topic um, of course, we will try to answer all of your questions, but we will focus still on the topic. Just to let you know, also all these MOOCs are recorded in case uh, you watch to, to watch a certain part again, just navigate to our website, to the Academy website on the Tricentis page and navigate to the MOOCs. They are all recorded and available um, one day, at least one day afterwards, after the MOOC had taken place. Right, that's it for my part. Um, so we'll hand over now to Frank Miklisch, who will tell you about the fantastic topic of uh, Tricentis Tosca Robotics, and that will be insane. Frank, what do you have for us today? Okay, thank you, Jonathan, for the nice introduction. So, what is Tricentis Tosca Robotics? Basically, um, what we're doing here, we automate everyday tasks with Tricentis Tosca. So, we build test cases, automated test cases, like you all know and love them, um, but without verification points. In this case, I will show you soon a couple of examples, since those examples are only used by myself in my everyday life. I'm not putting too much emphasis on making them very stable, using the best methods of identification, uh, putting too much work in. My goal with Presentis Robotics is making my life easier, not harder, by using Tosca for that. So basically, modern robots at work. You see here a lawn mowing robot, a pool cleaning robot, or a, um, a vacuuming robot. So you see robots that do daily menial tasks that some people just don't want to do themselves. And that's where Tosca comes into play. Every, pe every person that is in this MOOC, every person in this, our office, every person nowadays working with computers has tasks that are repetitive, has tasks that have to be done again, again, and again. And so, well, we do them. But why not use Tosca to automate them? Yes, Tosca is primarily a tool focused on automating our tests. But well, we have the action mode input, so why don't we use input more and let Tosca do stuff for us? Why do it ourselves? Um, to give you one quick example up front, I had it in my real experience um, at a customer. They told me, yeah, we have every day, uh, every month we get an Excel sheet with 2,000 numbers that one person um, manually inputs into their system, and then they want to use Tosca to verify that all numbers have been entered correctly. And my first question was, why don't you use Tosca to enter them? They did, and they saved a lot of work. And so, in theory, we have some exemplary tasks that can be taken, and that's also what this MOOC is about. I'm not telling you, do this, or do this, or do this, or do this. I'm just giving you some examples, some ideas, what tasks I am automating in my everyday life. Everybody has different tasks, so I'm not telling you this task can be automated, this task can't. Be creative. Do 
what you think, okay, this is a task that I have to do every week twice. It costs me one hour each time, so I can automate that. This task I have to do once a year and cost me five minutes. That's nothing for automation. So I try to give you some ideas, some examples, what you can automate in your everyday life. So for example, it can be entering data into a system, automating a repetitive process, or just ordering pizza. If you have like something like Pizza Friday, as we have in our company, or you have other things when you regularly order stuff, automate your ordering pizza process. As you, when you have a Tosca license in your company and you have access to the internet, why not? That's the cool thing about robotics. If you have the Tosca license on your work computer anyway, there's no need to get anything extra. There's no robotics license. If you have Tosca, then you can use robotics. Nothing else is, nothing extra needs to be bought. So um, I will now go to the more practical part because in robotics, there's not that much theory. It's just, okay, automate your everyday. So I will show you now five practical examples how I or we in the academy use Tosca to make our life easier every single day. Uh, those five examples will be, I'll show you that in Tosca in a second. I will just switch to screen sharing now. Give the system just a second to adjust. Okay, you should now see Tosca on my screen. So the five examples that I'm going to show you is, I will add products to the new demo web shop. So I will enter data into the system using test case design as the foundation of all of that. I will add discounts to the new demo web shop. So again, entering data into a system. I will add a Jira issue or Jira issues, so you can see, okay, it's also possible to automate stuff like Jira. I will add training users for SAP, so we have an SAP training that we do in our, uh, that we have in our training portfolio. Users need access to the SAP system, and so we have to create training users. So I can show you not only using Tosca Robotics for HTML, but also for SAP. And I will then save them in an Excel file. So you will also see a bit of Excel. And I will show you how I do my time recording with Tosca. Important thing here, uh, if you have any questions about technologies that I'm using here, uh, you can always put them into the Q&A uh, Q part. Uh, ask the questions. Jonathan will be happy to help you out there. Um, if you lack training for one or two things, we will have a treat for you after the MOOC. And basically everything you will see here, you will get the training for it. Also the SAP part, whatever you need, you will get free trainings after the MOOC. So yeah, just look forward to it. After this MOOC, you will get all the trainings to do exactly what I did. The only thing you will be lacking will be the admin rights for all the products I'm automating. So the first process I'm going to automate is in our demo web shop. For those of you who haven't seen it, and I think nobody has seen that yet, that is our new demo web shop that's going to be used in the new Automation Engineer Level 1 training that we're going to go live with in this week. So we'll have a new training out there or an updated training out there with a lot of new cool features where we we'll also use that new demo web shop. And to prepare that, I had to bring in all the products we had in our current demo web shop that we use for most of the trainings. So I will just show you how that process works. So I have to go to administration. So finally, you will see the back end of our demo applications. And there I have to go to catalog, products, and then manage products. I have to go to add new. And then I have to fill in a lot of data. I don't need all, the, all of those data in every case for every product, but it's still a lot of manual labor I have to put into to enter all those products. We currently have about 50 products in our demo web shop. So there would have been 50 times go there, type in all the data manually because the import function is not that good. It actually doesn't work cross versions of the demo web shop. So it would have been a lot of work. It will probably have cost me two or three days to put in all the data. So I went on, I automated it, exported the products from the old web shop, put them into test case design and let it run. So currently, um, I for this MOOC, I made a little 
different version of the test case. So let me just log out here so we can all see from the start. Um, my first example, I have created a quick test case design, just three different products with not all the possible entry values, just a quick roundup so it's easy to understand and you can see what we're actually doing here. So we enter three different products and I created a template for that. My template, as I said before, it is not a perfect template in, uh, in regards to the best practices we give you in the trainings. I didn't look that much for naming convention because the only person using it is myself. Nobody from, nobody else will use it. So I didn't care for naming convention that much. Um, I didn't look that much for stability. So if I had to use something that's out of the box thinking but not 100% stable, I did it because stability isn't that much the issue. I had to fill it up once. And so if it doesn't work anymore in two weeks, I didn't care. So I, uh, log in to my demo web shop. That's everybody who does who did the AS1 training knows how to do. I click on administration, and then I use something that's called mouse over. Basically, what it does it, uh, is I move my mouse over a link and wait until the pop up arrives. That's mouse over. It's going to a link, not clicking. Also, you see that I use click a lot in here. This is just um, for the showing in this MOOC in the actual. Uh, actual uh, automation when I did it for myself, I didn't use click, I used the X as we show in the trainings to make it fast and simple to go as quickly as possible. In here to show how it looks, I used click. Uh, then I have all my values from test case design. For those who don't know what that actually is, what XL links mean, just asking Q&A and Jonathan will happily answer you there. And then I log out again. That's my template doing all this. And the single test cases, you see the only difference in the single test cases is actually entering the data. You can see here, for example, product A is the coolest and bestest product. It has a, a ship um, SKU price. It's not downloadable. Shipping is enabled. Does cost, doesn't cost extra. It's test, tax exempt. It's not. It's not published. And we save it. And then we log out. And then just for this MOOC again, I created an extra template that does nothing else but to delete afterwards. So I click on delete and this is something image based. So I make sure in the MOOC, I want to add the four products and then delete them immediately afterwards because it's just showing you what I'm doing and not wanting to keep them in there forever. So that's important. That's the first example. Um, the first example is really just data input. That's one of the most important things you need to know for, or you can use robotics for if you have a lot of data to input in this case it's three different sets but as i said when i did this real it was 50 or 55 different sets of data with even more data than i show you here that i had to input it would have cost me days over days automating it preparing everything did cost me an hour then i ran it, it cost me 20 25 minutes for execution and then i was done so robotics Tosca enabled me to do that menial task, that repetitive task in one and a half hours instead of two or three days. Um, yeah, so let me just quickly show you how it looks when I execute it. So you see here, demo web shop is open. I'm not logged in. So let's run at first. The first instance here, Tosca will start and go through the process. So we log in, go to administration. I do the mouse overs here, as, as, as you saw, add new. This is way quicker than I could ever do it by hand. First product has been created. First product has been created in like 20 seconds, which I would never do in that time. I take five or 10 minutes for the same thing. Robotics is just faster. So, and we keep going, we keep going. The thing here is, again, I know I put a lot of emphasis on that, but the important thing here is out of the box thinking. You have to think what are tasks that are worth of automation, not for test. This is not about testing things. 
Tosca is a testing tool, but this is not about testing things. This is about making your everyday life easier. So you see, it has obviously worked. The execution has finished. Um, all test steps have been executed perfectly. Now let's check in the system. Maybe something went wrong. You never know. So let me log in to my system under test, or in this case, my system under work. I go to catalog, products, manage products again. I look for product A. And you can see it has been created exactly like I wanted it to be. The coolest, bestest product has been created. And yeah, my work has been done by Tosca. I log out again because now I want my work to be reverted in this case. And I run the deletion part. So I just do nothing like clean up my system again. That's something I would normally never do in real life because in real life there would be no need for it. The data I put into the system has been put in there to stay. As I said, this is just for this MOOC. Here I used image-based automation for the delete button. Uh, because, as I said again, I'm not looking for stability that much in here. It was a task that should run once and then it was done. Because later on, if I have only one product to add because we need something for training, that's just not worth adapting the automation. If you have a task that you have to done monthly or weekly even, then please also look for stability. If you have tasks that need to be done by your whole team, please make sure that you look for stability and naming conventions. This is not a regular test case again. You're, it's not that we're not that adamant about how you name it. But if you use it for colleagues, please be very sure that everybody understands what's happening. Okay, that's it. Our first example has finished. Everything again did perfectly work. And so our system is clean again. But that's not the only place where I can use that in our demo webshop, in our new demo webshop. We have some discounts. And that's a test case actually that we will probably use again and again and again. Um, if you did AS1 and AS2 trainings, you, you know a couple of discounts we have. In our current demo webshop, we have like five or six different discounts. But for a lot of trainings we do on site with customers, we create 10 or 15 additional discounts to use to show different examples, to do more test cases, to show combinations. And so it's always a lot of work to add those discounts. Just for you to see again uh, what kind of work that is, because I want to make sure that everybody knows why I'm automating here. The actual number of values we have to enter is not that big, but still it's something we have to do. If we have three instructor-led trainings in a week, we have to add 30 discounts. So I go to promotions and discounts. I have to click on add a new discount over here. And then I have to enter a name for the discount, where it should be assigned, order total, or products, categories, manufacturers, shipping, or subtotal. So I got a lot of options here. I have to say if I want it to be a percentage discount and a maximum or just a flat discount, like $5. The start date and the end date, if I want to make it limited in time. Does it require a coupon code and what the coupon code is? And should it be limited or 50 times only or only twice per customer, whatever. And then I have to click on save. So that's not a lot of work. That costs me like 15, 20 seconds per discount. But if it's 30 discounts I have to do, it also adds up. And if we have to do that twice a month, 30 discounts, it's adding up. Automating it did cost me like 15 minutes, and I'm safe. And I can use it again and again and again.
So in the test case, at this time, I did not make a, temp a test sheet for it. It's just a single test case, but it would work the same. If we have 20 or 30 discounts we create, we have a test sheet with those 30 discounts and just go for it. So at discounts, same, I have to log in. I have to go to the discounts page. I have to click on add new. To click on add new here. And then I enter the name, the discount type, the percentage, and the amount. And there's something special here. Um, the amount field, there are two uh, text boxes for the amount. One of them I can see and steer, and one of them that's uh, sometimes hidden. And so it's a bit tricky for automation. I didn't want to put in that much effort. It would have been naturally very possible with Tosca, but I decided I wanted a quick solution. Because again, if I put in too much effort into um, the automation, I actually lose time. I don't want the automation to take up more time than the actual running will take over the course of time. So I made it easy. I click just on the amount text box, use send keys to send in the amount, and then I keep going with start date, end date, coupon code, the code itself, and the limitations. Then I click on save and then I click on logout. So again, that's the emphasis on using Tosca Robotics is never put in more effort than your gain is. In testing, it's easy. If you have regression test cases, you will get in the effort easily. In robotics, it's always thinking, okay, does it make sense to automate here or is it too complex? In this case, I use an easy solution and so it's not too complex. So let's run that here. It will be quick because it's only one test case now. So as you see, I go to discounts, go to add new, click on that field and send the value with send keys, as I said, and I click on save. And now I've created a discount in 20 seconds total runtime. I could make it easier. I could skip the lock-in and lock-out part and just stay on the discount page if I want to. I wanted to show it a bit cleaner here. In real life, maybe I say the user has to log in, go to the right page manually, and then do everything. Yeah, that's all possible. So, and to clean up my system, as I said before, I will use delete discounts. I have a table in here where we'll go to the new discount one, the one I just created, click on edit delete, and then click on delete. In this case, the delete discounts is a real test case. I would use that in my real work because the discounts are often used only for the one training we do. We use them for, or we create them for, we change them up, we use them for this training, for the next training we create some different ones. And so in this case, I would use a delete discounts. I would clean up my system afterwards, after the training with such a test case. So let's quickly run that. Again, same process, logging in, going to the right page, clicking on edit in the table, delete. Using image base again, it's the same module actually I created. Delete and I'm done. So both things would take us uh, Already with only those two examples, I saved us five days in a month. I saved us one person five days. Five PD have been saved by using Tosca Robotics in my team with just those two examples. And five PD is a lot. You all know that every person day that can be saved and used productively in customer engagement is nowadays a big win. And that's why we use robotics. I've saved my company five days with just those two examples. And that is just amazing. But now let's look into other fields. This was just data entry in a demo web shop. Let's look at Jira. Um, some of you might know it, most won't, but I will say it now so everybody will know it. Uh, in our training department at Tresentis in the academy, we're using uh, agile method, methods or some agile methods to um, 
create our trainings. So we, even though it's not software web development, Scrum can be used here. We're using Jira. We're currently in our 11th sprint since we started using Agile methods. And so we have to use Jira or any other tool, but we decided for Jira. And to create the issues, I can also use Tosca. This is not applicable to everybody. Um, for us, it's we have a lot of topics or tasks that are the same and the same again. For example, we have user stories, create the video for lesson one, create the video for lesson two, create the video for lesson three, create the video for lesson four, and so on and so on and so on. So naturally, I can easily automate that and just put in the user stories for lesson one, two, three, four, five, six, and so on. If you have a lot of tasks that are vastly different, it might be harder to automate, not from a Tosca standpoint, but from a data standpoint that you want to put in. In our case, in my example, I will now add the Jira issue that we need for the next MOOC, actually. So if I look here in Tosca, I click on create new issue and call it, actually it's not the MOOC Jira, I'm sorry here, it's the MOOC for OSV. I send in the enter key, so basically, and then I go to create issue. I say which project, which is the academy, it's a task, its priority is critical. In our case, critical means it needs to be done in the next sprint because the MOOC is in the next sprint. And to make a bit of commercial here, the next MOOC will be on July 12th, the topic will be OSV. That's why we'll put it in like this. We will not create another to uh, user story then, and then I click on create. This is actually really our next MOOC. We'll talk about that a bit later on. Be excited. OSV is a very exciting topic. Topic. Then we go to issues, open the MOOC tasks, and then I will directly add the issue to the backlog. Why will I do that? I'm the product owner for all the trainings, all the issues we have, so I'm allowed to put it directly to the backlog. So that's why I can use that part. If my team uses that test case or test case like that, the go to issues part will not part of it, but it will stop after creation of the issue. So it works for both levels. Everybody in my team can use that. It's just a nice thing to do. So let's see how that works. I click on creation, put in the name. Now Jira is taking a bit longer than normal. Now I have to say, sorry, my test case just failed because Jira is still loading and I didn't put in a wait on. That is a life problem, ladies and gentlemen. Might be my Jira just crapped out. So, um, if Jira decides to load, we'll come back to that after the next test case. We're just switching to the next one and see what happens then. I'm sorry for that, but that's life for you. So the next case is add training users for SAP. So uh, as I said before, in our SAP course, Automation Specialist for SAP, we need to give everybody access to a, a training environment and therefore need, we need users there. So what we have to do here is I have to click on the user maintenance. You see now our SAP backend, and I will go through the process with you. I have to enter a user here, like for example, MOOC, 5, MOOC 06. Then I have to click on create. To wait a second because SAP is not known for its speed. Then I have to enter a last name. have to go to log on data, create a password. In this case, I would generate it in here. Then I have to copy the password. Don't write it down. I will delete the user afterwards anyway. So I have to copy that text out of here completely, paste it and the username into an Excel sheet, and then click on save. For the next user, I have to copy that, enter a new, new name, and go through the same. So it's a lot of 
manual labor again to create those users and then afterwards um, putting all their values into Excel, Excel because it's not only creating them in SAP, we also need the records to send out to you, to the people who buy the course, to actually get access to the SAP system. So my test case will be, t will be a bit complex in this case, it's more complex than the other ones, but we also have to create three or 400 users at the same time, so it's worse to make it that complex. So first off, I set some buffers. I set a password, which is rest random text with 15 digits. So it's a long password. User number and row, we will see what they do. And username. The username for this now will be Momo, which is MOOC morning, because in Austria it's morning. And the user number I set here. So the username for the first user will be Momo1. Then I take one of the SAP modules that are in our base subset in the standard TCE. Just go favorites and SU01 with an asterisk. You can see here, that's here. SU uh, favorites, SU01, and then I don't care what comes behind because it's my only favorite starting with that. And then I create my first user. I wait until the create button is actually enabled. SAP is a bit slower, that's why I use wait on a lot here. And I enter the username that I just set in the buffer. Click on create, enter the last name, enter the login data, the buffered password, all the other data valid from now until one year. And then I use the Excel engine. So if you've never seen the Excel engine, I go to a Excel workbook that I can show you here. It's like a magician. I show you what I'm working with. It's a completely empty Excel workbook. So I go to the workbook in my temp folder, SAP users. You see that's this workbook. Give the workbook an ID, set it to be active. And then I go to the worksheet, SAP users, as you see here, that's this worksheet. I create a range, which is basically me creating a table that allows me to do stuff in there, like with table steering. So the range ID is users. It starts in row and column one, and it ends in column two and row 500. I set this range to be active, and I set the header is in row one, so this row will not be taken into account in the table steering. Then range manipulation, for those who don't know it, that is classic table steering, not T-Box, because the Excel engine is classic engine. I go to the column user here, uh, classic is left match, so I don't need an asterisk here to get username when I enter user. Go to the row that's buffered in row, which in this case will be row 1. Since header is excluded, it will go to this row. And enter the username here. In the next one, I will enter the password here. And then I will close the workbook here and I save it. And then my first user has been saved. Important here when I use the Excel engine, the Excel sheet I'm using needs to be closed. Other users, I do nearly the same thing, but in user maintenance, I click on copy, copy the user and just enter the new name and then everything else is the same. Important, I do it on a folder with a repetition. So now I would create one first user and 99 repetition users that are copied, so 100 in total. That would be a bit boring for you, so we'll just do five users in total. And afterwards, after everything is done, I will click on exit. So let's see how it looks. Let's see how Tosca works. You've seen before, it would have taken me roughly a minute to create a new user. Then copying would take 30 seconds. So it's five users. So if I would have done it manually, it would be three, three and a half minutes to do everything. Okay. Let's see how long Tosca takes to do it. Uh, after the first user creation, it will take like 20 seconds to start up Excel. The Excel engine takes some time to start up. That will happen now. So it will take a couple of seconds now. Don't be afraid that nothing's broken. It's just the Excel engine starting up the first time. After the first time, it will be very quick. So Tosca is still thinking, starting up the Excel engine. Now that's done. And now everything will be very quick.
Second user has been created. Now the third user is created. User number four. And user number five. I said five repetitions, so six users are done. Oh, done. Okay, that was 49 seconds of total execution time to create those users. Let me just show you in the Excel sheet that it has worked. You see here all the users, all the passwords. Again, I will delete them now immediately after the MOOC, so no need to write down the passwords. Um, it took 49 seconds for five users. As a manual user, I would have taken three minutes um, without making any mistakes, no typos, nothing. Um, 20 seconds of those 49 have been starting up the Excel engine the first time. So if you create 100 users, this will not matter anymore because it will be way faster. So probably around every user after the first will take five seconds, roundish five seconds. So you can take create 100 users in around eight minutes, eight, nine minutes, which as a manual would take me one, or two, one day again, probably, maybe half a day. So again, with the one test case, for 100 users, I saved us half a day of work. But every month we have to create two or 300 new users. So again, with the other stuff, I saved now, let's say six days, six PDs of work each month. So this is a bit more complex test case. Um, but yeah, in the end, it's, it's not that hard. If you know the SAP engine and the Excel engine, the rest is just HTML. As promised, you will get a little treat for that in the end. Now let me check Jira. Maybe if I log in again, it might work again. Give me just a quick second here to actually show you what I had planned there. So let's give Jira a retry. I, tr I do a manual retry for a uh, manual try first. Yeah, here it opens. So let's try it again with Tosca so you can actually see that this really should work. So now, yeah, it opens up, it creates the issue. It goes to my predefined filter, open MOOC tasks, and will then send that MOOC to the backlog. And now the issue is in my backlog and in the next sprint planning, we can put it into the sprint. We can um, estimate its worth in story points, and then we can work on this MOOC. So see, also that can be done with Tosca Robotics. So that was four examples by now. Uh, adding the Jira issues for me is a lot of work. Adding the Jira issues for training, for one training, let's say the AE1 training that we just created, we had about 60 Jira issues with user story, etc. pp, which I also had to add manually. Um, I used a test case design sheet for that with a lot of predefined stuff. In the end, instead of, let's say, three days it took Tosca half a day with half a day preparation for me. So I again saved two days. So by now I nearly saved 10 PD that I could actually work for the company productively at customer facing and not with internal tasks. I let Tosca do those internal tasks. So uh, before I come to the last test case, let's run through the, f uh, the five we did quickly again, or the four we did until now quickly again, uh, just to give you a reminder what we did. First, we added products to our new demo web shop. Um, why? Because it's a lot of work, a lot of product, a lot of data to enter. So I used Tosca to automate adding stuff into the demo web shop, the new one, um, and delete them afterwards, deletion only for the MOOC. Then we add the discounts to the new demo web shop. In this case, the deletion not only for the MOOC, because we need that in our real life the same way as here. 
then we add the Jira issue. If Jira works, that was actually the first time it failed me in this case when automating it. So Jira also worked perfectly here. Then the most complex thing, uh, we add the training users to SAP. Uh, set buffers, we use a lot of things here. We use set buffers, we use standard modules, we use SAP engine, we use the Excel engine. Uh, we're doing a lot, a lot of effort here. That is a lot of manual labor, a lot of manual labor. You saw the whole code that the SAP password generation spewed out that would have been to copy it into Excel and then cut to only have the password. That's a lot of work and we just do that all automatically with Tosca. And the last example I'm going to show you now, add MOOC to Harvest. Harvest is our time recording tool. Candid see here. I also already did some uh, pre-work today, obviously, but let me just show you. I can even automate my time recording. I know your boss won't like if you automate your time recording, but hell, we can do that. So I have a quick test case here. I click on new entry. I enter my project, which in this case is delivery. MOOC, it's a MOOC delivery, it's the MOOC Robotics, it starts at 10, it ends at 11, and I have to save my entry. So, let's start that. And here you see, my time recording for the MOOC is done. Just like that. Tosca Robotics, hey, automate what you want, what you need, what makes sense in your everyday work. That's it for the practical part. I will now hand over to Jonathan again. Yeah, that was a fantastic uh, show. Thank you very much, Frank. That was very nice. Um, thank you also um, that you sticked with us with us uh, to this until this point. Um, we have hundreds of, of questions. Uh, thank you also for that for the active um, taking part of our of our MOOC. Um, so we will uh, now going for the Q&A part where we'll, we'll answer uh, one, some of the questions that you asked during this uh, presentation, a live presentation uh, for all of you because uh, during the MOOC only the questions were only answered for uh, the single users but now we will pick up uh, some of the questions and, and answer them. Um, to all of you. So let's start with uh, the first question. Um, there was a question, uh, I think it was not quite clear uh, where the question came up, what, how error handling um, is handled in Tosca. So uh, that means if uh, application is not working or a page doesn't launch or um, it takes more time to identify an element um, as expected, so thank you for that question. Um, on one hand, uh, synchronization problems can be addressed by wait on test steps. So you can uh, do that either dynamically to wait for a certain event or property of a control, or you can do it statically uh, if it's not possibly, and that is always the preferred method to wait dynamically because you don't want to waste uh, your precious testing time. Uh, so you wait, you can also wait statically for a specified amount of time and that is covered in our uh, standard, so-called standard modules. They are uh, delivered uh, with the default installation of Tosca and can be imported um, and you can set up uh, even either, I mean, uh, dynamic uh, property to wait on. Like I said, this would be the preferred way or a static time in milliseconds to wait uh, for a specified event uh, or of a spe specified time. And on the other hand, if you have an error situation, uh, to, to you have a pop-up like showing up or a system that is not available, you can also handle this by so-called uh, recovery scenarios. There will be an element, you can create it, it uh, in the blue section, uh, it's called um, reco recovery scenario collection. And in this collection, you can define various uh, recovery scenarios. All this is covered in our AS1 and AS2 course. 
Yes, um, for the next question, it was um, instead of using the app navigation UI, you could also automate the SQL data injection from Datasheet recording Iggy, uh, SOAP UI or uh, your query to tool. Advantage is navigation time and UI. That's of course is absolutely true. Uh, but in case you have no interface uh, for non-UI tests, you would need to set up um, a test case like it's shown, like it was shown in the presentation. Um, another question uh, that came in was, how can I get the modules for the Jira test case? Uh, it is, is it included by Tosca license or must it be programmed by myself? No, you don't have to program any test case. Luckily, um, we just used out of the box functionality within Tosca and set it up. All the test cases that were shown ourselves, uh, our wonderful presenter, uh, Frank, did that work for you to show you all the test cases and to um, automate uh, your everyday task very easily. You will have an addition yeah. to that, Frank? If I might chime in, uh, automating Jira was very easy. There was no problems with identification. It's as easy as aut to automate as it gets. It's even easier than our demo sample application. Wonderful. So uh, as it said, the test cases in this presentation are built by the present itself and can be created with the inbuilt tools and modules within Tosca. Another question was, um, I have not used image-based mapping so far, uh, for instance, for buttons in use of Tosca. And I would be interested to hear a little bit more on this, if the time permits. Well, we unfortunately, we cannot cover image-based um, creation of controls in this MOOC, but um, there is a free course at the end of this MOOC. Fortunately, just stick with us and you will be, um, you will be given a free course um, where all these all these topics are covered, just stick with us. And by the, by uh, at this point, let me thank you all of you uh, for joining the session again. Another question was, um, what do you mean by scratchbook? The scratchbook was used a lot during the presentation, and the scratchbook is a way and a tool in Tosca to execute your test cases in the blue section during the build phase uh, of your test cases. So the important thing is that you have in mind you can use it to execute, but uh, with a little bit with a little restriction, there the test results will not be uh, stored in this case. Therefore, we have the execution list section where we can set up uh, our test cases. Uh, during runtime, during uh, after the build time of our test cases, where also the test results will be stored. So it's a temporary uh, tool, a tool to to temporarily execute your test cases to prove them if everything works fine. Right. What was the next question? Let me have a look. Uh, I don't get what exactly the mouse over action does. Well, maybe, Frank, maybe you want to explain that. Yeah, mouse over action does exactly what it says. It, it takes the mouse and pulls it over some control. I think the easiest way is to just show that again. Let me quickly switch to screen sharing again. That makes it very easy then. So my screen is back on your computers. So basically mouse over is, my mouse is here. Um, my mouse is here. And I will drag it over here. And it will just, ah, you can't see the mouse in the screen recording, it seems like to me. But if you can, no problem. Uh, I will just put the mouse over the sales and then drag it down so it will go over gift cards. I'm not clicking on something and just moving the mouse to be over that to get a reaction. Like for the pop-up, I don't have to click on sales. I just move the mouse over sales and then the list will pop up. 
that's mouse over. Just move the mouse over and hover over something. Back to Jonathan. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, another question was, uh, I think during the, you explained the test sheet a little bit and you used a template yeah. and there was a question, was this XL dynamic expressions meant? Maybe you want to have some words on that. Yeah, well, XL just means external list and that means we take the data, not we don't have hard-coded data in our test case. We have a template um, that gets its data from the test sheet or actually you could also take the data from an Excel sheet. So it's when we work with data-driven test cases, we have uh, data stored somewhere else, not hard-coded. Um, that's all part in the AS2 course. Um, you will learn how to create and use those XL links there. But basically it's having data that's somewhere else and not hard-coded in our test case. All right, thank you very much. Um, also, there is a question, uh, how can I get all the list of modules for SAP? I, well, I'm not sure what you mean by list of modules, but when you're referring to the modules for SAP, Frank, maybe you want to... Yeah, the SAP standard modules are, if you, have, if you're already a Tosca user, you can just import the standard subset and you will find them in there. Um, but also a complete list of SAP modules can be find, found in our manual. Uh, give me a second here. Um, I will try to push that on the screen, but I can't. Um, I will put a, uh, I will send it to all. Give me a second. I will send an answer to everybody. One second, please. Uh, wer hat die Frage gestellt? just can't put it on there, but uh, just go to support.tracentis.com and look for SAP modules in the search and you will find the whole list of all of them. Okay, that sounds very easy. Yeah, the support site is always a good place to uh, uh, get your question covered. Uh, just use uh, our search uh, functionality in the uh, Tracentis support page. That's very nice. Um, I have a short look to the watch we have still um seven minutes to go so another two questions maybe short questions that we can cover here uh, another question came in my work is to compare two pdf files can i do that by automating well yes you can yes you can very easily actually there is also a standard module in tosca that's called pdf compare that allows you to compare two pdf files uh, very easily also, with our new OCR part, you can use image-based automation and we have a property OCR text where you can compare two uh, specific text parts in PDFs. Those are the two big options. A uh, little hint, they will be in the new AE1 course that will go live this week. Wonderful. AE1 course, huh? Yeah. A new one. A new Automation Engineer Level 1 course going live this week. Wow, fantastic. Another question uh, came in. From Avinash Narvade, how, how uh, I spelled the name right, um, sorry for me, if I don't, um, how to integrate Excel with Tosca Commander? Well, there are several ways. Uh, the first question is, what do we exactly mean with integrate? You mean Excel as a data source or Excel as something where you put in data? Please go in detail there and then we can, will surely be able to help you. All right, fantastic. Yeah, um, that's it for the for the Q and A part. Uh, we have still uh, some things to announce um, for the uh, five minutes that are left. Uh, so the next MOOC we're having at the moment, the eleventh MOOC, the next MOOC um, will be OSV Orchestrated Service Virtualization. And it will be presented by Alexander Moore from Product Management. 
uh, just please um, go to the website, check out the newest MOOC, register for the new MOOC. Um, it will take place on the 12th of July 2017. As always, we will have two sessions and they also will be recorded and put live, put online uh, afterwards. So this MOOC will be about uh, service virtualization. Um, yeah, that you're being able to connect the missing link between front end and back end. And that will be for sure a fantastic MOOC as well. Yeah, and uh, now I think you're all waiting for this announcement. Uh, we're giving free course for all of you who have stick to us uh, until this point. And please also complete the feedback um, we're giving a free course, um, AE1, the newest version of our automation engineer course, the first level. And as I hear now, uh, first, since you need for prerequisite, you have to do AS1 and AS2 before that, those will also be included in the package. Wow. That's cool. And well, I told you that you will be able to do everything that we showed in this MOOC, so we will also put in the automation specialist for SAP into the voucher. So we get four trainings for free. If you already have one, two or three of them, well, one or two of them, then sorry, but those four trainings will be in the voucher. Uh, one important note, the email will get out not today. We will send you that voucher code early next week, Tuesday or Monday. I hope for Monday it might be Tuesday. So please be patient. We are not forgetting you. We're not cheating you. You will get the voucher code Tuesday at the latest. Okay, so don't, no need for opening a ticket if you don't get it this week. You will get it early next week. I promise. You saw my email address on the screen several times, so I can't hide anyway. <laughs> That's good. That's good. Uh, yeah, how to, how to redeem these vouchers? Maybe you also want to add this? Um, in the voucher code in the email, we will have a link to our knowledge base and the knowledge base will have a detailed descriptions how you can redeem your voucher code. So there shouldn't be any problem. You can just use them. Then you get directly access to the four trainings and can immediately start doing your trainings, your free Tosca trainings. If you don't have a Tosca license, you can always use the Tresentis Tosca trial version to do the trainings. Fantastic, fantastic. So all all the content of these MOOCs are covered uh, within these three courses and plus you have uh, the SAP course. So it's AS1, AS2 for all those of you who didn't do it so far and the new brand new AE1 course and the SAP course. So one more thing, yeah. the recording of this MOOC will not only be on our website, but mm -hmm. also on our YouTube channel. We'll also put the MOOC recordings on a YouTube channel. There's also in the YouTube channel a playlist called Tresentis Tosca in a Heartbeat, where we give actually the couple of videos we already have up there. I give some hints about common problems. We're going to expand that. Leave us comments there, what you want to see. Give us a heads up what you need as a quick, quick help video. Go to our YouTube channel. We're always happy to see you there. Fantastic. So, um... I say then goodbye. I just short look on the watch. It's uh, nearly 11. Thank you for joining us. Um, we hope you learned something uh, in this session and we A see lot. you again uh, on one of our next MOOCs. Thank you and bye bye. Bye bye folks. Bye bye. Have a nice day and domo arigato Mr. Roboto. <laughs>